I've done a lot of job interviews with Apple over the last few years for 12 different positions to be exact. With every interview process I do, I get better. And with every role I fail to get, I get experience somewhere else and then come back and reapply to Apple again. But this video is about my most recent resume and my portfolio that I submitted to Apple to get my most recent interviews with them. The role I was interviewing for was for a product design engineering position. Before even getting into my resume, you should know that I always like to structure my resume around keywords that I know I want to include, like DFM, SOLIDWORKS, DFA, GDNT, root cause analysis, FEA, etc. These are keywords for mechanical engineering roles. And if you're looking for keywords for other types of roles, then I recommend going on LinkedIn and searching for the job you want to find these keywords for, read the job description and make sure you have these keywords in your resume. Anyways, I'll include these keywords in the skills section of my resume and I usually have that divided into three sections, CAD, mechanical, and electrical. I do this so someone looking at my resume sort of has everything in front of them right away and they don't have to hunt to look for particular words. I like to have this two column structure on my resume just because I think it looks nice, but if you go with the one column, it's still good. There's no particular benefit to either really. Next section is experience. Obviously, if you have no experience, applying to Apple on your first try probably won't work. Trust me, I know because I did this when I applied to Apple in my first year of university with just a on my resume and obviously I failed miserably. If you have no experience, the best thing I've seen people do on their resume is lie a little bit. Now I'm not saying you should do this. All I'm saying is most of these successful people in my class were doing this to get ahead and it worked, but I'm not saying you should do it. Let's just call it the finesse formula. First, find the skills and keywords that your ideal job requires by going through the job description. Second, Google resumes for your dream job title. Third, fake a work experience on your resume. Make sure the company name you use is a real company, but it's not too impressive of a company like Netflix, for example. Fourth, make sure the job title of your fake work experience is the same as the job title of your ideal job or at least somewhat similar finally teach yourself the skills you said you had in your fake work experience that way if you do get to interview you don't get caught in a lie I've genuinely never done this although if I did do it earlier I definitely would have had better co-ops sooner because yeah, when I was in first year, I've seen people land really cool internships and I didn't know why at the time. And it was only later I discovered that they were using this finesse method to do that. Again, I'm not saying you should do this. I'm not saying you should line your resume. I'm just saying this is something that has been proven to work. Now do with it what you want. Anyways, let's look at the specific experience that I put on my resume for the Apple role I was applying to. Most bullet points, I'll talk about what I did, how I did it, and the results. For example, for this bullet point in my server robotics experience, I say managed an EVT build, leading a team of 10 plus operators, optimizing the line and creating detailed SOPs to produce a 98.6% yield output. Manage an EVT build is the what aspect of this bullet point. And in case you're unfamiliar, EVT stands for engineering validation trial, which essentially means that for this project, I was managing the robot prototypes that just met basic functional requirements and not necessarily managing the final mass produced robot. Anyways, leading a team of 10 plus operators, optimizing the line and creating detailed SOP that was the how aspect of this bullet point. And in case you're unfamiliar, SOP stands for Standard Operating Procedure. And it's just basically a fancy way of saying instruction manual. But that's just the lingo they use in the mechanical and manufacturing world. So I had to make sure to use it as well. So they kind of look at my resume and understand that I know what I'm talking about. Finally, when I say to produce a 98.6% yield output, that was the results aspect of this bullet point. The way I got this number is by taking the amount of robots that were actually produced and dividing that by the amount of robots that were planned to be produced and then multiplying that by 100. For example, if we plan to produce 500 robots, but we only ended up making 493, Dividing those two numbers together and multiplying by 100, we get 98.6%. I always find including numbers like this on your resume really goes a long way. But some bullet points, I will only include the what and how aspect just because sometimes the results is 
kind of obvious. For example, here when I say design IP67 electronic enclosure, implementing O-rings and gaskets while designing fins to avoid enclosure from overheating, it's kind of obvious what the final result was. Also, just in case you're unfamiliar, IP67 just refers to a particular code that we use to describe something that's waterproof and dustproof. One important thing about experience is if you have short-term work experience that's less than a year long, you should specify if it was an internship or a contract position. As you can see, I do that here in my resume and it's important because if you don't and they say that you have work experience that's only four months long and it doesn't say internship, they'll think if they hire you, you'll probably just leave right away. Moving on, we got projects. Because I had a decent amount of work experience on my resume, this area was pretty small. I elaborate more on it in my portfolio section, but I just briefly mention it here. But the reason I even have these projects on my resume is because in a lot of my professional work experience, they'll make me sign NDAs, which means there's a lot of stuff that I can't say or share on my resume or portfolio, but my own projects, I can talk about as much as I want, which is why I always, always try to include it in my resume. Anyways, the next section is education. It's pretty simple. I just include my university name, my major, the amount of years I was there for, and my GPA. By the way, you see this desk that I have in the background? It is a smart standing desk that I got from FlexiSpot who are sponsoring this part of the video. Why is it smart? Well, it's got a bunch of buttons, it moves up and down, it has a motor, so that makes it smart. You can sit and work or stand and work, stand when you wanna be healthy and sit when you wanna be lazy, super smooth and super sturdy when you move it up and down. It can also hold up to 355 pounds, which is more than I'll ever need. I personally chose to go with this wooden walnut design with black legs just because I thought it looked really aesthetic. This particular desk is called the FlexiSpot E7 Pro Plus. It has 10 different sizes for the top of the desk and five different material choices, each with up to eight colors. You also have three options for the leg design with three different finishes per leg. They also have a ton of optional accessories like cable trays, cable clips, monitor arms, etc. Also, a lot of other standing desks are pretty difficult to assemble, but this one was quite simple and straightforward. But the legs and the desktop were a bit heavy, so I couldn't do it all by myself. Lifting it, I definitely needed someone to help me with that. We done. But with everything I mentioned so far, my absolute favorite thing about this desk is, you know when you're sitting at a desk and there's this particular posture you need to have so you don't damage your back? I could never attain this posture with regular desks. The table would be too high, or the chair would be too low, or my shoes too thick, or the monitor is too low. But with this desk, I can make these miniature changes to the table so that it just reaches that perfect optimal height every time I'm working. But I'm gonna be honest, as amazing as it is, this particular desk is a little bit pricey because it sits at around $700. But they do have cheaper options like the E5 sitting around $300 or the E2, which costs about $190. Definitely way more affordable. So if you wanna get one of them, make sure to use my code TS50 for a discount. Anyways, next up is my portfolio. And this is something I always, always talk about. You know, if I ever Ever made merch you know what I'd put on it I'd put on it make a portfolio in big letters that's how important it is it'll help you stand out so you actually get the interview and usually in Apple interviews I'll definitely be asked about my past experiences so having images to show them in my portfolio definitely helps a lot I didn't include any images from my work at Servobotics Tesla or blended because all these companies were super secretive had me sign NDAs and don't allow me to share anything at all. I mean, I could, but if I did, I don't wanna get in trouble. Notice how all three of those companies are Silicon Valley, California companies, which tend to be very secretive. Anyways, I like to have my portfolio be a couple extra pages attached to my resume, but you could also have a link on your resume that leads directly to your portfolio, which is like on a website if that's something you prefer. The website probably works better if your projects are more software based but the portfolio I think works better if your projects are hardware based. Anyways, whether your portfolio is in a PDF like mine or on a website, you just have to make sure to have like images of the hardware projects you worked on. I include images of CAD that I did, but I'll also include images of the final product like in hand. That way it looks like, not that I can just only design something, but I can actually build things too. Because anyone can really jump into CAD software and start making shapes and designing, but not everyone can actually assemble and build things in real life. Anyways, in my portfolio is where I'll go into more detail on the what, how, and results aspects of projects that I've talked about in my resume earlier. For this particular project, which was called a centrifuge tube reader, I designed and fabricated a device that reads the sediment and water quantity in oil 
with 95% plus accuracy. The way I did this was by using sheet metal features in SOLIDWORKS. Finally, the result of this project was that the design fulfilled its purpose with 97% accuracy versus the 80% that existed previously when readings were done by humans. Another example of a project on my portfolio was this thermostat packaging that I did with Ecobee. So if you ever order a thermostat from Ecobee, it comes in this really nice packaging. It's really satisfying to open, but it is really expensive to make. However, sometimes Ecobee sells its thermostats to contractors who are building new homes. They don't care about the nice, satisfying feeling of the box or how good it looks. They just want the thermostat to be safe in their hands. So because they don't care about the aesthetics of the packaging, I worked on designing this very basic, rudimentary, bare bones packaging to give it to them with the thermostat inside. It was meant to be very, very cheap and save the company money. I worked on designing and building this packaging that would keep the thermostat safe against drops and impacts, but would be very cheap. So that was the what aspect of this project. The how aspect was that I did this by using SOLIDWORKS to design the outer box and I was in contact with manufacturers in China to fabricate the packaging. The outcome was that I was able to reduce production costs by 62% and I built strong relationships with Chinese manufacturers which is actually very important when building hardware products because you communicate a lot with China. Also notice how I had the CAD images and actual images of the box to show the hiring managers looking through my resume that I'm capable of actually building something like this. Now the final project I want to talk about on my resume is Happy and that was a personal project that I worked on. The last two projects I talked about were stuff I did at work. Happy was a personal project that I worked on with my friends in my fourth year of engineering. Although it was like a couple years ago now, the reason I still have it on my resume is because interviewers and hiring managers always ask me about it because they're always curious because it's something that they've never seen before. It's kind of unique. So what is it? It's a toilet attachment that analyzes your pee before it's flushed away to allow you to track your health and detect any possible diseases in the early stage. So yeah, talking about urine and pee in an interview, gets them a little bit giggly sometimes I've noticed when I talk about that. So how did me and my friends create something like this? Well, I created 3D CAD models and 2D engineering drawings using Fusion 360 of what the project would look like. You can see the CAD in these two images here. And to build it, I used an Arduino with some sensors as well as a 3D printer. You can see the prototype in the third image over here. I also labeled all the components of this project so it's easier to understand what's going on when a hiring manager is reading my resume. To show that it actually worked and was somewhat successful, I shared it in the results section. The outcome of this project was that I was able to output urine pH and hydration levels with a 95% accuracy and was able to provide users with accurate predictions on dehydration levels and whether or not they have a risk of developing kidney stones. I was pretty proud of it at the time and if you want to learn more about it, I'll put a link to happy in the video description. And again, you'll notice that out of all my projects, the one I talked about in most detail was happy because I had no NDAs restricting me at all, whereas the other ones definitely need to be a little careful with what I can and can't say. This whole NDA situation makes making a resume portfolio a little bit more complicated and definitely not the easiest thing to deal with. But whatever, what am I gonna do? That's just the world we live in and the industry we work in. But I hope that goes to show how important personal projects are and just how important a portfolio is. So please make a portfolio. Again, make a portfolio. But that's it. That was the resume and portfolio that got me my most recent engineering job interviews with Apple. I'll link both the resume and portfolio in the video description for you. If you wanna see my first ever engineering resume and how bad it was, check out this video. And if you wanna see what a typical first day is like as an engineering intern, check out that video. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video overall and make sure to look through FlexiSpot's website if you're looking to get a standing desk and use my discount code TS50. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.